Twisted Fate has been a solid carry so far in set 8.5, but in this comp he truly shines and unleashes his full power. In this video I'll teach you how to master this comp by going over the build, what items and augments to take, how to play the early, mid and late game, and then I'll go over some in-depth positioning examples. The build is incredibly strict and there is no room for flexibility unless we get specific augments. Here is the level 8 version. We play 4 Oxfors, as that trait has been reworked to give the units tank stats instead of attack speed. Fiora gives TF Duelist, Annie gives Spellslinger, Alistar gives Aegis, and Viego gives 2 Heart. All the units fit nicely into the comp in terms of synergies, therefore we're playing Oxfors frontline. The remaining units will be Nico to have as a secondary carry and to give Spellslinger, we play Echo as he is a great tank and gives us 2 Star Guardian and Aegis. Lastly, Sona is mainly there for 4 Spellslingers, but she can also be replaced by Janna later if the weather is good for us this game. Like I said, this build is very strict as this version is highly optimized, but I will cover later in the video how we can change it based on our augments. And the best hero augments for this comp are any support augments for any of the units on our board, or carry augments for TF, Nico, and Echo. TF is our main carry, so we prioritize making items for him first. He has one core item, and that is Ginsu's Rageblade. This might seem strange, but if we look at TF's spell, we see that it scales with attack speed, as the more auto attacks he does after casting, the more cards he will throw after that 2.5 seconds. Therefore, Ginsu's is core, as it allows him to deal an insane amount of damage on the second and third casts. The second item wants to be Static Shiv. This item gives decent base stats to AP casters, and it also shreds MR and deals a little damage every 3 auto attacks. Since we already have Ginsu's on TF, he will proc this item often, and will therefore get great value from it, to make sure his spell deals a ton of damage. The third item depends a lot on what you need, but it will usually be a healing item or another damage item. Which you need depends mainly on your augments and what the current lobby looks like, but in most cases the third item wants to be Gunblade, Jewel Gauntlet, Giant Slayer, Hodge, Guardbreaker, or Deathcap. If you need healing, you go with Gunblade or Hodge, and if you need more damage, you go with one of the other ones mentioned. After you made TF items, you want to make tank items. Since we can scale infinitely with Ginsu, our biggest enemy is time. We need to stall for as long as we can to make sure that TF can deal immense damage on his second and third casts. You will itemize either Echo or Annie, but most of the time you will itemize Echo. Here is a tier list of their best items, with Echo's best on the left side and Annie's on the right side. Their tank items are very similar, so don't force tank items for one or the other. Build whatever you can, but keep in mind the best options. If you get a spatula, you want to make Oxhorse spat. This allows us to make Oxhorse Echo, and we can also drop Diego for another tank. He is mainly there to give us 4 Oxfors, besides that, he doesn't really serve much of a purpose. You will usually replace him with a threat or a legendary unit. The best non-hero augments for this comp are Jeweled Lotus, Spellslinger Harder Crest, Portable Forge, Component Grab Bag as we have multiple units we want to itemize, Oxfors Harder Emblem, Ancient Archives, Celestial Blessing and Thrill of the Hunt so that we can drop healing on TF, Second Wind, Ascension, Sunfire Board, Ludens Echo, and Item Grab Bag. I mentioned a lot of augments there, and the best ones out of those are Jewel Lotus, Spellslinger Harder Crest, Portable Forge, Component Grab Bag, Oxfors Harder Crest, and Ancient Archives. If all that info was a lot to take in, then check out the cheat sheet for this comp. It's available for patrons and YouTube members. Here is the Corky cheat sheet from last set, so you know what to expect for the Oxfors TF cheat sheet that is available right now. The carousel priority for this comp is Bow, Rod, Tear, then Belt. The best opener for this comp is to play Gadget Team with Lulu Carry, but some other openers that also work are Lucian with Infinity Team, Lux with Defenders, and Draven with Defenders. Once we have found our comp, we need to make items. Even though Rageblade is the core item for TF, we still want to make Static Shiv first. This item deals flat damage, which is strongest in the early game when champions have lower HP and less resistances. Rageblade is also a great slam, as it allows you to run any backline carry as an early game carry if you haven't found an AP one yet. So avoid making items out of Bow, Tear, and Rod that are not Rageblade or Static Shiv. Another thing to mention is that this comp is a little expensive and we really want to fit 8 units in. Therefore, it's okay to loss streak in the early game to generate a lot of gold, but ideally we win streak in the early game, which is the case for most comps. And if you want to learn more about how to play the early game, then check out my guide where I go in depth on that subject. After the Krugs down, you should have more direction towards a comp. The general requirements to play TF is to have at least one of Rageblade and Static Shiv, and have one component for another item. Additionally, you really want to have a frontline that can fit in the cheaper Oxfors units, 
as it allows us to play them early and not have to hold them on the bench. It can be hard to hit Annie 2 and Fiora 2 at level 8 if we have to sell them off for Eco during stage 3. If you are weak in the mid game, you can either roll a level 6 or 7 to stabilize. If you roll a level 6, this is done on stage 3 too, where you want to roll for this level 6 board. You can also run other carries like Lulu or Lucian if needed. If you want to roll level 7 instead, you can either do this on stage 3-5 or 4-1, which you pick depends on how much HP and gold you have. This comp is not great for rolling at level 7, but if you have to, then just go for it. And when rolling at level 7, you're looking to stabilize off a TF 1-star with a variation of the level 8 board, where you are usually dropping one of the units you didn't hit or 2-starred, or you usually drop Diego, Echo, or a Spellslinger. You can also play units like Lux or LeBlanc to replace Nico, TF, or Sona until you hit them, and other tanks like Riven, Shen, or Vi to replace the tanks you didn't hit. During the mid game, it's also important to scout. This is so we can see how many other people are playing Oxforce TF. This comp can support two players at max, as there are a lot of forecast units we need to two star in the comp. But if you want to pivot into another comp, then look to play either Stargard and Nico, MF Carry, or Viego Carry. On stage 4-1, you want to be level 7, and from here you have two different options. You can either roll level 7, or you can go for a fast 8. Since we really want to get to level 8 with this comp, we want to fast 8 whenever we can. This does require you to be 60 to 70 plus HP, or if you have enough gold to hit level 8 on stage 4-2, or if no other players are rolling down at level 7. Again, you can roll at level 7, but it's more awkward as this comp doesn't power spike as hard as it does when rolling at level 8. At level 8, you will drop Diego and play a threat if you get plus 1 Ox Force, and if you get plus 1 Spellslinger, you will usually drop Sona for a threat, or you can go for 6 Spellslingers if you have sufficient frontline without Echo. You can also replace Sona with Janna if the weather is good, meaning it's either sunny so you can give your frontline more HP, or it's windy so you can let TF scale even more. Once you hit your board at level 8, you want to push for level 9 to add in Leona for 3 ages, or you will add in a threat unit like Fiddle or Aatrox for more frontline and CC. Rolling for TF 3 star is an option instead of going level 9, but I find that it's way too expensive and inconsistent unless you got a champion duplicator or two, while also being uncontested. Therefore, it's better to push level 9 in most cases. Now let's cover general positioning with this comp, which looks like this. We have TF and Nico in opposite corners to keep them both safe and to not put all our eggs in one basket. If TF is more safe on one side, then you always move him there. Sona is used to bait hacker units and to make them go to the frontline after killing Sona. Our frontline positioning doesn't matter too much. You want to have Echo next to melee carries and you want to second row Viego so that he doesn't take initial aggro. Now moving on to some in-depth examples. Against the first guy, the big threat is Misfortune. The important thing to know about this matchup is that MF targets the largest clump. Therefore, we want to have as few units next to TF as possible. Additionally, we also want to declump our frontline as much as possible, and Echo is taunting Garen to make him get a worse ult and possibly even ult in the wrong direction. Against the second guy, the big threat is Samira. We are again splitting up our frontline a bit to make Garen not hit as many people with his spell. We also have Echo taunting the Mordekaiser here, resulting in him ulting the wrong way and keeping our backline safe. TF is focusing the Leona first. This is to make sure that Leona doesn't kill our frontline one by one. After that, he'll go to the Garen. Against the third guy, the big threat is Vex. We don't always want her to deal too much damage to our backline champions, so we have lined up our frontline to make sure that TF and Nico stay safe for as long as possible. Besides that, this matchup is not very interesting positioning wise. Thank you so much for watching. If you learned something, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. If you want cheat sheets for any of my comp guides, they're available for YouTube members and patrons, and links to those are down in the description. And if you want to get better at TFT, then join the Discord. We got over 9,000 other players there who are hungry to climb. And if you want to get coached by me, the information is over on the Discord server as well. So take care and see you in the next video.